What are you thirsty for? Due to popular demand, I have decided to go with Thirsty Thursdays because it is catchier. And I am a, I'm even thinking of coming up with a little quip like, Welcome to Thirsty Thursdays with Jake Thurston where you can get your spiritual thirst quenched or something stupid like that. I'm not sure. We're still working with it. But in all reality, uh, just to kind of give you the vision of what I hope this to be, this is something God has laid on my heart for a while. I've had this idea for over a year and never really dove into it until just kind of this past week. I really felt like it was time to um, go with this and to vlog and to make this a time of encouragement, of pondering God, of reflecting on ourselves and being encouraged and uplifted, maybe even challenged every once in a while. Um, challenged in our thinking, challenged in our actions, in our way of worshiping God and uh, understanding who he is. Uh, and so I certainly hope and pray that this can be that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and dive straight in with something that uh, I think the Lord wants us to talk about this week. And I simply want to start off with a question. How would you describe God? How would you describe God? Uh, I think a lot of us would dive straight into answers like, oh, he's, he's a loving God. He's a sovereign, sovereign God. He's all powerful. He's uh, perfectly good and forgiving and righteous and all of these things. And I think especially when we describe God and how we understand our culture, our individualistic and consumeristic society that we live in here in America, we really love knowing God to be someone who can encourage us and pick us up and give us the strength to get stuff done and to do things and to become more. So we can be, you know, we almost tend to view God as more of a good crutch or as a really great helper to get us through tough times. And while that is certainly true, I think we limit God so much and our expectations of what he is truly capable of doing. And really, we limit ourselves in imagining everything that God can possibly be. We're, we're really good at knowing all these technical terms about God. We know he's all-powerful. We know he is eternal. And we ask him to give us certain skills, like for us to read our Bibles more and to do these righteous acts more. Um, but do we ever use our imagination not to imagine God, but to really allow ourselves to look beyond the box that we often try to put God in. To try to see him in a fuller image, in a fuller way that he is truly, uh, that he truly is. So recently I read a quote um, from a guy named Adam Clark. It was in another book I was reading. And this is just one of the most majestic descriptions of God I have ever read in a very long time. And it has just stuck with me. And I just want to read that. And I want to share it with you. Just really take these words to heart. Consider, just consider the breadth of God and who he is in this quote. God is the eternal, independent, and self-existent being. The being whose purposes and actions spring from himself without foreign motive or influence. He who is absolute in dominion the most pure, the most simple, the most spiritual of all essences, infinitely perfect and eternally self-sufficient, needing nothing that he has made, illimitable in his immensity, inconceivable in his mode of existence, and indescribable in his essence, known fully only by himself, because an infinite mind can only be fully comprehended by itself. In a word, God is a being who, from his infinite wisdom, cannot err or be deceived, and from his infinite goodness can do nothing but what is eternally just and right and kind. Have you looked at images of galaxies lately? Have you watched videos that talk about the birth of stars and the deconstruction and the, the destruction of stars? Have you watched anything or learned anything about the complexity of cells and our individual structures and, uh, and just how God masterfully created all this and how God is so much bigger than we could ever possibly imagine? 
and yet we're content to just view him as someone who kind of helps us through our day. So what would happen if we really took time to just get lost in the grandness of God? To just think about who he is and how much bigger he is than we could ever imagine. That does a lot of impact to who we are and how we live.